to a Liberty TV and Radio. You are listening to a Liberty TV Radio. Right, good morning and welcome to the Sports Buffet on Elegbeta TV Radio. My name is Edafi Matthew. So again, you love to come in the Elegbeta One of Sports. And uh, it's a bit of a time to be here. So let's kick it going. Let's uh, rock and roll as best as we can. Mm. And an easy one is a Friday. Yeah, you know how Friday goes. Friday's like put everything together. And just nice cameo with Osas this morning. Talking about love, 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 love. And I still maintain, I maintain for those who, you know, this generation uh, who don't agree uh, with me when I say, really, who don't agree with me when I say uh, you get what you uh, confess about yourself. You know, the universe will always give you what you say about the universe, okay? There is no hiding from that reality. You would always get the thing that you say. So if you believe that all men are scum as a woman, you will see scum. If you believe that all women are cheat, you will get to see cheat. But then there are good ones anyway. There are good ones just the same way there are bad ones. So you just need to focus. Like when you're doing uh, a business or a project or exams and you keep saying that, oh, this thing will not work, I will not succeed, I will fail. Chances are that you're most likely going to fail and succeed because the energy you put into it already sees where you are headed. And no matter what you do, that's where it's going to go. And you know how when we're growing up, most of us are like, ah, math's too hard. You know, that's the energy, the disposition. But then there are those people who just put everything into it and it comes out to be that the, you know, some math mathematical equations very easy. You look at ah, why is it doing it? Just like that. So it's the thing that you give yourself to, and the 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 the, the I don't want to use the word confession. It sounds like a church, but hey, it is what it is. It is what you say by yourself, the whether positive or negative affirmation that you put out there that would you know go around the you go around the world and then come back to your doorstep and deliver for you in robust fashion. So be careful what you put out there. Doing a business, you can't be saying it will fail. Like when I see people say, Nigeria will never be good, Nigeria can never change, Nigeria can never improve. Meanwhile, what Nigeria is today, it's not half as bad as what America was in 55, 56, 57, up until 78, even, okay, or even 80, 84 that Reagan came in. You know, that's when the turnaround really began for America. You know, beyond, beyond that, back then, America was a it's, it's still bad today anyway. Still have homeless people, country of over 200 years, still have homeless people, still have more people incarcerated for not doing anything, wrongfully incarcerated and all that. So uh, it, it will come good eventually, but stop saying it will never be good because if it goes bad, like I tell, tell my friends, let's be honest here, now we have all of us get the opportunity to be able to travel out of this country. So if you keep saying that the country not go good, it not go good, are you going to be happy to suffer in this country? Well, especially you that does not have the means, the opportunity, or uh, the funding to travel abroad. Are you happy to suffer, like to really suffer in this country? At some point, you've got to be positive about it. You've got to be like, when you want to do a project, what's the first thing you say? Now, I know that this is a tough challenge. This is something new. This is something I've not done before, but I'm going to succeed at it. That's how that's how people succeed in business, in, in whatever they do. There is no manual. Okay, go to page 50. Okay, let me use this for example. Go to page 50 and you will see everything that makes you a success in YouTube. You read that and finish, you come back. The, 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 the man I want you to read to, you're not going to force the hand of people to, to like your, to subscribe to your channel. You can wait up today, you have, so I, you'll see the increase. 10 people have subscribed. The same way you wake up and you put a smile on your face, tomorrow you wake up, 50 people have unsubscribed from your channel. That's nothing you can do, it's life. 
But then again, you keep soldiering on because you just have this belief that total strangers out there will love what you're doing. The same way the person, you know, you know how much faith it is to cook food in your house, put it on that back in the day when I was going to go and hop, put it in your head and go and hop. And you're believing that every street you will pass by, uh, God help you. All the people on those streets, they have not cooked their own food at home. They are not eating. They are going to call you and buy all your food. And you will come back home without any leftover. You know how many faith you need to have to do that. But then that's how we chase life. Or you take your child, your maybe 10-year-old, 9-year-old, 11-year-old child, and you send him away to a body school. Some in the same state, some in another state. I have a family friend who's child who lives in Lagos, and his son, his first son, who's somewhere in the region of 13, 15, goes to school in Aquaibo. Right? You know the faith you have to have to send a child like that that far. But the thing is, that's how the world works. You have to have faith in what you do. Well, uh, let's talk sports. I'm just, you know, tr transitioning from Osas show, the, the TGIF show, to this show. Uh, people should stop being too negative about situation, especially this thing called love. It's not that hard. Now. It's not that complicated. But once you just believe that every guy is, uh, is a scum, is a cheat, uh, every woman is a cheat, that's what you will get because that's the league you're playing in. That's the probability level you're playing in. Same way real estate is hard. If you tell me to, if you give me your property to sell, I don't know how to do it because I don't have the skill set for buying and selling. Okay, I can't sell. But I have a friend uh, who have a property uh, company, and Chris, in the twinkle of an eye, he will sell that property. And, and, and that's, it's, that's what it is. So it's different. It's what you give yourself to. But if you ask me to explain details of sports, football especially for you, I'll explain in details Till you understand that sometimes you would even begin to doubt it because, like, I mean, I can somebody know this much about it, but then you see it unfolding before your eyes. So that's the same way with all this whole life, making money, successful, having good marriage, having a good life. But let's come, come and talk about sports. I'll find everything. Go. I'm not alone in the building. I've got this kid who doesn't understand any jack of what I'm saying right now. Uh, Benedict, take it. Benedict, how are you doing? Good morning and welcome to the Sports Buffet Friday edition. Good uh, morning to you, say that. Um, I'm happy to be here. I actually did understand um, some of what you said. Um, before some saga happened, it was this, um, my dad, like you, so many mention of real estate. He was um, trying to do that and there was this book, The Secret, I believe you've read it from that book. I have it, yeah. yeah. you have it. And he was trying to read, my dad is not a reading type. And that book holds literally everything you said, but just in longer forms and universe and all of that, it don't make mention of God, universe, but he didn't finish the book until all of that happened and well, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I'm, I'm happy to be here, I'm very, very happy to be here. Can it I ask you, happened, can yeah. I ask you, are you reading the book? I finished the book more than two times, okay. although I, I read the same version, not the... I have the whole package, the, the whole five packets in that bookshelf there, and I've also watched the video, I heard there's a movie, but well, I'm yeah. not interested in it. Why are you not interested? I, I, don't, I don't watch such movies. Why? Anything other than kind of comedy, something else. I, I think, but you're okay, you're 15, it's okay, but I think you should open up yourself to a whole lot more because the learning process of life, everything goes. I, I saw somebody post something the other day on Facebook and he said, uh, this was his, what he wrote, uh, Festus Solero, what's his name? He said, I can't understand for the life of me how grown adults, married men and women, would sit down and be watching Cartoon Network. And it, got, it really got me laughing. So I just replied, just type, do you have children? Because if he have children, if he's got children in his house, and it's not like the old school parents who their children, once their children hear their voice, they will run and go into hiding. He should understand that watching cartoon is like one of the best, it's not even cartoon animation. It's one of the best things that can ever happen to you. One is therapeutic. Is um, really it gives you fun, and then there are actually dialogues in cartoon that dialogues in cartoon that will set your brain in motion. I'll just open up your mind to something. So for me, I'm ravenous in consuming content, even though I choose content, I don't want content that would contaminate my thinking process. But I'm very, very ravenous, whether it's on social media, whether it's books, ebook, or hardcover, 
or you know TV. I can watch everything apart from horror movies and serial killing movies. <laughs> but then my wife loves horror movie and serial killing killer movies. Well, hey, I mean, we, I it's horror, but this is horror when you used to watch Black Phone. Black Phone and uh, I, I think I saw Black Phone like mm, somebody gave it back. I don't have that time. I don't because horror movies are the same thing, like the same repetition of the same thing. Uh, it's like a Fast and the Furious. It's the same battle, running with cars, the damaging things. It's the same thing. So there's so much repetition. I grew up on Dracula's. Come on, I watched so much Evil Dead. I spit on your grave. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I've had my fair share of watching horror movies. I'm done. Okay, let's come to sports. What for the whole of this week? What's the biggest uh, talking point? uh that you saw in, in the sporting space this mm. week a lot a lot it, it doesn't it doesn't there's no week in football even if everyone's dead even if all the <laughs> are dead there's always going to be this one thing to report all reporters and i always say reporters know how to ask the weirdest of questions how i i, I did if that was a performance me and my mind live i wrote myself bad of something but um, this week was 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 one to always see, especially yesterday. Yesterday's Nations League was oh my god, something else. But um, before that, um, yes, the first Nations was show was the best thing of this week for me. Was the best thing. Why? Why? Um, it just had everything. It just had everything coming into it. Um, maybe some um. I didn't like something, you didn't you like the thing, I like something, you didn't like the thing, Jack Grealish, Moses Simon, and all of that. It just it wasn't just, yesterday, was it before yesterday? Yesterday, that yeah. was yesterday. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. You were here yesterday. Okay, so it's the best day. Yeah, it's the best day. So you want that kind of show to repeat the same? Man, I love that. It's the fans that will decide now. It's the audience that will decide whether that's what they want. Okay, let me go to the new segment uh, and give you but before I go, let me just take this. I'm breaking the rules now. No, the right, okay, you have to wait. Um, let me let me do the show the way the new format that you guys all the Senate approve. <laughs> That's what you got approved. So let's do it your way. Uh let me not go and uh, jump the gun and but well, I'm just loving what uh divine okay is saying here, the conversation that he's saying uh about Nigerian journalists and all the blah 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 that is happening. Uh, there's so much there's so much vengeance in the land, there's so much less destroyed, especially with the non-qualification to the World Cup and the anger because uh, a lot of people have lost money for activation, trips to the World Cup and all that. But let's uh, let's deal with uh, what's going on here. Sero explained in the, the injury situation, uh, Nigerian football must move from analog system to computerized system. According to Christian Merua, I'll tell you the story. He will be listed as nominees for Premier League Player of the Month of September. I uh, revealed, okay... And uh, you have nominees for Premier League Manager of the Month also revealed. Who's going to win it? Me, would you vote for Alex Wobi? Let me start with you. No. Who would you vote for the September Player of the Month? Well, um, Son did very, very well. That had three. No, Son um, did well in just one game. Uh, Wobi just did well. Um, no, he just did, he did just did well in one game. But that meant... The whole thing came out just one, in one game where he made an assist against West Ham. But he's been working since. He's yeah, been working very well. Yeah, but I'm, Son has been disappearing. Um, it's been raining. It's been raining in Tottenham. <laughs> well, you know, you know, everybody's going to go for Haaland. It just, it just, it just comes down to that. Haaland is there is any way not to vote for Haaland? I don't like Haaland personally. I don't like him. But your, your liking, your choices are your business. That's your responsibility. It's not everybody's business. But Haaland is going to win. But neither am I going to vote for him. Will be for Haaland. Who's the manager of the month for you? Manager of the month. Um, really tough. Really tough. But if you ask me, I say um, Anthony Conte is the one. Okay. Uh, you seem to have some serious love for Tottenham Hotspur lately anyway. You went from loving Arsenal to Man City. I don't love now you pretend like you don't love anyone. Okay. FMFC, FMFC is your favorite team. I don't even know. FMFC is, FMFC is your favorite okay. team. Don't worry. Uh, so let's start with the survivors camp. And uh, it's good to have this explanation. Yesterday, social media exploded on something that is just very, very unnecessary you know unnecessary uh people should check their sources and confirm their stories before they put it out there because at the end of the day you are as good as the the facts on on the back of your information so by eagles head coach they should just call him manager anyway. so by this manager joseph Acero has revealed the truth behind the departure of wilfred from the camp as the team prepares to face algeria 
Nigeria will face the first Algeria Chan team this evening at the main Mohamed Maloy Stadium in Constantine. Uh, the second friendly against the Algeria main team will be played at the Maloud at Delphi Stadium in Oran next week, Tuesday. All the invited players are in camp, except Imanda Dennis, who didn't even show up because of injury, and Wilfred Didi, who left for Leicester City yesterday. It was reported that the midfielder picked up an injury, but some reports suggested he left the camp because of a disagreement between him and Coach Pesero. Joseph Pesero speaking to NFF TV, and 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 that's thought of the disagreement. Eh? I'm always laughing when I when I hear people still emphasizing on it that there's a disagreement. Uh, just as Pesero speaking to NFF TV, cleared the issue around and said, "Indeed, indeed, it's okay when he came. I gave one relationship with all the staff and our players. The fitness coach from Leicester City sent a message to our fitness coach. We have the connection with them." Uh, that he complained in the last match. He came, he did training without intensity, he did training small but uh, with conditions, but he felt something in the hamstring and needed one MRI scan yesterday, which is Wednesday, okay? Uh, this was him talking to Baba Femi Raji, the media officer, yesterday, and this is what he said. He said, I think it is better uh, not to use them, okay? I mean, what, this thing is translated in the way he spoke. It is not done yet, but I don't want to use one player in a friendly match if he can get more injuries. For that, he had to go back to Leicester City today, which is Thursday, uh, to recover faster. Okay, that's what the coach said. That's the explanation to what happened and the fact that the NFL did an MRI scan. That's very, very important. Well, yes, the head was joking that he did more than 35 years in, in real sense. Oh, why is that a problem? Are we, is he playing age grade competition? <laughs> uh, <laughs> was the person was the person in the hospital where he was born? <laughs> was his father the doctor, the uh, mother the matron, <laughs> the midwife? I, I don't know. Where, where is that coming from? We should face the issues and not the tissues. Okay, uh, NFL presidential candidate, Dr. Christian Emerua, has re reiterated his plans to transform Nigerian football. Speaking at the NFL presidential debate organized by Sports Writers Association of Nigeria, Swan, Federal Capital Territory, FCT chapter yesterday, Imerua revealed that having worked in the system, he knows what the problems are. The president is to run the administration, he said. Nigerian football must move away from analog system to computerized system. I'll bring experts to help train the trainers in Nigeria, and we will introduce a clearly defined policy that guides the engagement of NFF staff and board members. Okay, I wish him the very best, but I just think that even though on paper is the most qualified, if I know Nigeria very well, the most qualified don't win, okay? He would not, I don't think he would win anyway. Uh, let's talk about he will be getting nominated for Premier League uh, player of the month. The Premier League have announced their September Player of the Month nominees with Everton midfielder Alex Iwobi making the cut. After an impressive start to the season, Manchester City striker Aline Haaland uh, was given the August Player of the Month award, unsurprisingly, as the sixth top of the goal scoring chart with 11 goals already this season. Now, with September uh, cut short in terms of games due to the international schedule, the Premier League have announced their nominees for second player of the month award of the season. Six players have been shortlisted for the EA Sports Player of the Month award, uh, player of the month award, producing outstanding performances in September. The nominees are let's give that give this award. Alex Iwobi playing for Everton, Philip Billy, okay, uh, some of these players. Uh, AFC Bournemouth, Kevin De Bruyne, Manchester City, Pair Emily Oyjon, Tottenham Hotspur, one design nomination. Jacob Ramsey, Aston Villa, and Marcus Rashford, Manchester United. So there's no Alan Allen in this nomination. My question to you now that you know the nominees, who would you vote for? Mm, Jacob Ramsey. Mm. Why? Jacob Ramsey is very, very well, impressive. Aston Villa that is wobbling. Yeah, but he's very impressive in midfield, um, switch between defensive and attacking very, very quickly. Uh, came off a goal before the loss game against Everton. Um, Jacob Ramsey's work rate is, is exceptionally there. Um, since um, Douglas Lewis has fallen out of the pecking order, 
Jacob Ramsey just stood up to his and he's an academic graduate player at that. So I feel like he deserves it. If you say so. <laughs> if you say so, I, I, I don't know. So who are you going for? Uh Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne is in my FPL team and he's giving me some good points this period, this month. Uh but I kind of like Alex Wobi. Like he's he's done way more than I expected. He's done well. So I could go between Kevin De Bruyne or Alex Wobi, one of those two. I don't think that pair Audra did exceptionally well all through the month, but in two games he did well. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, yes, there were two games where he went missing as well. Marcus Rashford also was excellent in the Arsenal yeah, game, yeah, yeah. but I don't think every game is showed up. Uh, we gained, in Manchester, I would have picked uh, Lissandro Martinez over Marcus Rashford, but I understand where they're coming from. I mean, they have to be at least an English player in this whole conversation. Um, I'm going I'm to go with Kevin Bronya or Alex Ruby, please. That's 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 for me, uh, because the work rate is brought in. Alex will be the work rate is brought in. Kevin Bronya plays for a team that really favors him. Alex will be placed for a team that's struggling. Yeah. I'll vote for Alex Ruby. Finally, I'll vote for Alex Ruby. Okay. Uh fans can vote for their favorite via the EA Sports website until 12 no BST on Monday. So if you want to vote, go vote for your favorite candidate. I'm gonna go there, vote and vote for Alex Wobi anyway. Uh Nigerians, if you love Alex Wobi, though that much those people used to attack me that I hate Alex Wobi. I agree that I'll vote for Alex Wobi. I hope you guys go there and vote for Alex Wobi. Don't just say it on the Instagram uh live or the YouTube live comment section. Go and vote. Uh, that's how many Nigerians don't get to win uh awards that re require online voting because we say it, but we don't even just go to the website and vote. Uh, Alex, uh, what's it called? Mikel Obi lost that on the BBC African Ball of the Year because of that. We we were bragging and bragging, but we didn't go online to vote. What number is for the league manager of the month? It's been also revealed. Uh, I, I think that from now to the end of the season, there's always going to be a Man City person for either the player of the month or the manager of the month. Somewhere you cannot eliminate Man City completely. Three men who oversaw impressive results in September 2022 have been nominated for the Barclays Manager of the Month Award, and you can help to decide who wins. Okay, the nominated managers are Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag, Tottenham Hotspur, Antonio Conte, and AFC Bournemouth Interim Manager, Gary O'Neill. After a slow beginning to the season, Manchester United Manager Eric Ten Hag uh, transformed Manchester United fortunes uh, best in Leicester City before ending Arsenal's perfect start to the season. Uh, take to the sides up to fifth. Contest Panam Osborne scored a league high eight goals in September. Wins over Fulham and Leicester City took them to 17 points from seven matches. Their joint best start to Premier League season. AFC Bournemouth interim head coach has uh, revitalized a team who lost 9 0 to Liverpool and fired their coach last month. Since joining, he has masterminded a 3 2 win over Nottingham Forest after a side 3 2 0 and a draw against Newcastle United. Fans can vote for the manager of their choice on the same website. So it's up to you to vote. Now, let me ask you again uh, who's the manager of the month? Anthony Conte. Anthony Conte, yes. You vote for Anthony Conte. Well, if you say so, what am I to argue with you? It's your position. There's nothing I can argue about. Well, yesterday we sat here and we produced a video on this, uh, um, uh, what's it called, matter consigning uh, with Freddie Diddy. I think after the show we uploaded it, our producers have been working on it all night and uh, having each, 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 like each is here and there, but it's fine. So I'm stuttering, right? But let's get into the conversation with the people on YouTube. So Friday, you know how it is. Friday is a free for all where we say anything. Well, that's why I didn't give you a topic, a talking point. I let you guys lead the conversation after the news. That I let you guys lead the conversation. You drop questions or talking points or anything you want us to talk about. And myself and this cute little boy here would uh, sink our teeth into it and try our best to, to talk about it. But for the whole week, which major talking point do you think that we need to uh, uh, do justice to, we need to talk about, or which uh, talking point you want us to talk about? Don't forget that tonight, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will play against the Phoenix of uh, Chira. Yeah, their big team. And we hope that they win that one so that uh, morals will be. I imagine if we lose this game, I mean, the senior Algeria team will be looking at us like, why are we going to play? Especially knowing that we can change the whole team. You can play every player that is available. But <laughs> there, was, there was this my classmate when Arsenal was not in here. He was like, they, all the players should enter into the bus and they should set the bus on fire. Well, if Nigeria, if that happens to Nigeria, don't say that. Don't say that. 
That's that. That's the way you want to talk. Okay. If your friend is foolish, you shouldn't be foolish. Uh, that. But I know that your generation, you people think think like fools most of the time. But that your friend is an arsonist. That's 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 no, 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 no. Hey, that's it. Yeah, it's not allowed. Uh, that's not. That's but, not. But that's not mean, a good for you or not. No, Don't. I'm not. I'm not talking about arsonist. Don't put anybody inside bus and set it on fire. Okay. That's encouraging violence. We don't do that here. Okay, but Nigeria is this big of violence. But for my, my major talking point is what happened anyway to Paul and Ash? We just just go stay totally. I think that it's expectation versus reality. I mean, this is my take on Paul and Ash. It's expectation versus reality. Uh, I guess when he played what put on those goal scoring performance, he thought that okay, it would move to a bigger club. But when that doesn't happen, your heart kind of like sink, and sometimes it's hard to move from that place uh, to another place, like Ari Kane. When you score those number of goals and play the way you play a certain stage of your career, you think, okay, well, with this team will win the World Cup. This team will win the Euro. This team will win the Champions League. This team will win the league. And you keep ending up with the bad end of the stage. At some point, you just lose it, okay? Uh, it takes extra effort to psych yourself up and go on. Look at Son, you know, end of last season, top goal scorer, joint top goal scorer. And if you see how he started this season, was very, very, like, below par. Just, you know, find... Uh, a way to score a lot of goals against Leicester, dying Leicester, but it's still below par. Right, yeah, now, now if you if you look at it, the motivation sometimes can just drop because you're telling yourself, what else again do I need to do? We need to do to win trophies because it begins to get to your aging, you're getting past the age, and you're saying to yourself, it might not happen again. You go from believing to not believing, and that's very very hard. But let's uh, get the conversation on. Uh, uh, you can still send me a message on my personal number, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 4, 2, 7, 7, 1, 6, 5 if you want to send a message, a WhatsApp message. Okay, so Divine Tokay says, good morning, friends and uh, fans of Elevator TV, Radio Kingdom. If they don't provoke Nigerian journalists, uh, they are blowing hot as uh, vengeful as their posts have been in the past. Uh, they said they are not reporting everything going on in the Eagles camp. Make them talk, oh, I want to see the movie we will come out of this, their show. I think that if they say that, that's their own foolishness. So if you if you have something to report, report it. If you don't have it, if you don't want to report it, don't wait till when one of you, because the tweet by Suleiman Falari was a stupid tweet. Let's be very, very honest here. Uh, we know that we friend they have been injury prone in the last two seasons. Injury have been one of his biggest released in this last two seasons. And uh, all of a sudden, tell that came up properly. All of a sudden, you you come at and you tweeted something that you're not sure, of, and you say sus. And then when when you get a backlash, and, and it's one thing that I I that bothers me about Nigerian journalists, they want to bash everybody, they want to teach everybody how to do their job. But when they 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 what we say when they match like, and you want to correct them, they not come with some vengeful action. Nobody's perfect, okay? Nobody's perfect. Nobody gets it right. I mean, I've said something here. Person goes on the comment section and say you're not right. This is wrong. I apologize and move on because. When you're not right, you're not right. There is no, oh, I have one secret. You know, let me, let, it, it, it's like a relationship between a man and a woman. So a woman does something and you're telling the person that this thing that you did is not right. Too. And she goes, what of this one where you do that time five years ago? What of that one where you do two years ago? What of that one? Now, when I did it, if you knew it was wrong, you should have raised it up and speak about it. If you didn't speak about it and you let it go and you're holding it in your hand for the day you will do wrong, then the relationship with that. So speak about it and let's heal and let's correct it. But if you were not speaking about it then, when you're wrong and I'm trying to correct your wrong, deal with your wrong. Don't tell me you have some secret that you have kept in a fixed deposit. Now you want to withdraw your fixed deposit. It doesn't make sense. So if they have sorry story to tell, they should. If they don't have, then they should shut up. Okay? They're not telling the story then. They should shut up. That's the, that's the way I think. Henry Achon who said... Uh, you're doing a great job, Ross. A little bit uh, watching from Estonia. Woo, Estonia. I remember when I wanted to go to Estonia, go find one girl in 2004. Estonia, a slim, tall girl like that. But then I went to Romania. I didn't go to Estonia again. Just, I don't know, something just happened. My friend, uh, uh, Lodanos, I know what's his name, called me and uh, Lodanov called me and I went to Romania and uh, the chance to meet that person just disappeared. It <laughs> was uh, the days of, uh, I don't know if you guys know Yahoo Messenger chat room, Sha. It was the days of Yahoo Messenger chat room. I had to go to Estonia to go and meet somebody that meets in the chat room. 
Why did you go again, Shah? <laughs> I didn't come and go again. Uh, it was 2000, uh, 2004. Uh, I wasn't married at the time. Uh, 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 and did you laugh? I'm going to laugh. I'm going to say good morning, Elegote crew and family in Nigeria. Journalists are just evil. All of a sudden, it is a problem now. I met Musa. is too old. It is well. Now away. Now away. Chuck says, you say good morning, Elegote. Greetings from my hustle grant in Alaba International. My my device is a viewing center for me and my guys here for Yosh. Oh, thank you so much. That feels good. But tell all of them to go and subscribe. I beg. I need that crowd, that congregation. We are stuck. We are stuck in a place. We can't even hit 11,000. We'll stay there for too long. We need to go up. And uh, please help us to crusade us. Crusade us. Campaign us. Eh? Let, let them campaign us. Let the campaign obedience. Uh, I beg, I beg. We need this number to grow. We're supposed to hit a particular target for something to be active, and we've not been able. Like we went to, we went to meet a sponsor that was supposed to uh, sponsor a particular show for us, and they said, uh, "You're doing well, but uh, if your numbers can get to fifty thousand and above subscribers, we will be able to put that money." But right now, we're not sure. Uh, so that really got me. It stopped me in the harbor. Hey, please, you guys should help us to get to that number, or even pass that number. And uh, see if the sponsors will come, but we're hoping anyway. We're hoping that the sponsors will come. Uh, it will enable me to like employ three or four more people and also uh, put salary on this uh, young man that is here. I think I kind of like the way he does his thing, but I, sometimes I feel like beating him. Yeah. I won't like, I feel like beating him, like really, really tying him down and flogging him the way my step that I used to do. But uh, that's that is no longer allowed in this generation. But I'll give it from jump. I think from jump is allowed. My people, is that child abuse? If I give it from jump, uh, is that child abuse? Mm -hmm. So the, it's not it's not my staff. Try and understand. This is like it's parents handed it over to me, so it's like my son. Because they, and you can't beat your staff. You don't have the right to beat your staff. Because this one is not my staff. I, I think I can give it from job. I can give it pick pain. The dad and face the world that is older than that age now. But guys, just in the comment center tell me, can I give him corporal punishment like from job and some of that things? Well, when I was secondary school, our best punishment was um we we'll write something on a piece of paper and I would say if I had two millions of pieces on it to fix it. Fix it back. Then I invented Work the, the puzzle. Then I invented the pack sand with fork from and fill a bucket from downstairs. Then I invented the spoon water one. That was the challenge. You didn't invent it though. I didn't invent it. No, but my school they were, they were, they were so frigid about something. Because I went to one of my former school that was a common and normal thing. Command, right? Yeah, command. It was a normal thing. Then you sit on the wall and just... Did they make you a stubborn boy or did they make you a better boy? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What's your outlook to life? My outlook to life? How, how does losing your dad, what happened? Like, when you lost your dad, what happened? Um, That was the most tragic moment of my life. The person who told me it was like, it was a bishop of our... Of because we attended Laura branch, but we used to attend a branch. So he told me in such a casual way, he told me that... Because he knows I'm a football person, I've gone to, to do commentary and love that thing. And he told me that um, you know what happens in football when one player gets injured, and sometimes when they get a car, when everybody has to do with tasks and all of that. Then also he also told me that sometimes when I make prediction and it doesn't go come to pass, so what do I do? I tell him that most of the time it's part of it that these things are very, very unpredictable. Then he told me that I just have to move on. Then he kind of told me that heaven called my dad. Ah, I was so I nearly jumped inside water because this is an nasty way. Was, I was so angry. Then it just everything just happened. But my 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 look towards life is life is is very difficult. Life can never be easy. And the moment life becomes easy for you, life becomes meaningless. Because competition is, is the best thing to ever happen to life. Yeah, thing. but 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 life is not really really difficult. Right? Um, there was this um, study on on a group of rats, like rat paradise. Where there was no competition, no enemies, nothing. Just they give them food every day and they eat fat and die. Eat fat. But eventually, uh, just in a year, like in a short period of time, there were more than five hundred rats. So just two rats that were inside me and Fina. There were more than five hundred rats. In a short time, all of them died. Why did they die? No competition. No, no, no struggle. No struggle. No, no struggle for anything. And which is why I believe. And my number one principle is number one: live life fast. It's from one of the richest album. That's not the album, Live Life Fast. But I still, I still try to wake up early. My mom wakes me up every day. That, that's, the, that's the only place I don't I don't apply to my rule of Live Life Fast. But every other time, that's my rule, Live Life Fast. 
boring. We'll be patient with you. I know what you're going through right now, so we'll be patient with you. Uh, you you will come around. Then let's not let's not fast track the 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 mourning period, the grief. Let's not fast track it. I can always tell people that if you have to cry, cry. If you have to, you know, be sad, be sad. But don't let it lead to depression. Don't let it kill you. Okay. Uh, what would your your dad if your dad were here right now? What would he expect of you? Hmm. That was tough. Though. Yeah. Um, we need to since school was a I won't call it hindrance to my career and all of that. We need to school is part of the tool that make your career. Yeah, but we need to at least make a, a bolder step. At least that was that was what that we expected. Then um, you know, you also need you also put me on one of the gig that took me one step to my journey for and all that. We also planned on, you know, I was trying to find how those things work and all of that. But as it is, I just need to, we just need to take that one step forward. We, we tired of being where we are, just that one step forward. That's what he would have expected of me at most. Are you, are you willing to take that step forward? Well, um, I'm very willing, very, very willing. I do. So focus your energy, focus your energy on that. Sometimes, uh, I just said to yourself, I want to make my dad proud and that's it. It's like, you me down to a Shut up. Like the way you that you're 15 years old, you're not paying bills. Yeah, like the way you chat, chat up. Come on, get out my friend. Okay, let's come back to uh, we're done with family conversation. Let's get back to for this one. Uh, and digital for my say, all of all of a sudden, they say players are old and using fake age in the, the injuries because he's older than the age. Uh, uh, that was kind of my point. It is sad that uh, we kill our football with our own toxic media, very retrogressive. A few months ago, uh, the, the manager of the Super Falcons, Randy Waldron, said that Nigerian media, sports media, are very toxic. And people were angry. And I came here and I said, it is true. The Nigerian media are toxic. They said, no. So let me, let me, let me, let me raise two very clear examples. Marco Roos, Marco Roos that is always injured. Is it because of his age cheating that makes him always injured? Um, Robbie Van Persie that spent all his better years, young age, being out injured. Was it because he aged, cheated? Abu Diaby, that also was like potentially great player, but injury didn't let, let him play. Was it because he aged, cheated, that makes him injured? Uh, what's it called? Uh, Alan Allen, that I've had 18 injuries in the 18 muscles injuries in the last three years. Is it because he's age cheating that got him those injuries. Having said that, let's move forward a bit. Marco Van Basten retired at the age of 29. Is it because it was a cheating? Then look at people like Cristiano Ronaldo, like Lionel Messi, who never goes at age. What happened? Uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is playing up to 40. Buffon, uh, Odoi Gallo, who's never out injured. What happened? Is it that they, over, uh, that they, they, they inflicted their age or what? So when people say some things, uh, as a journalist, you should know some basic things. I don't need to be a doctor to know that. You have to put a science to some conversation. You don't just come out and say somebody's over age. That is why it's always getting injured. If you want to attack somebody, bring facts to the table. Like, like I always say to people that, people say I'm brutal in the way I attack people. You know, I've never attacked any footballer without putting facts on the table. I don't care who you are. If you like who kidnap my whole, burn my whole empire, I cannot attack you on frivolities, on assumptions. I would always come to the conversation with that. And if you look at any player that I've ever attacked, I did do my research. Really. Like I'll settle down and do the research because I know that people will come for me. Don't come with conversation that you cannot even responsibly defend. And, and, and those people who are saying these things, uh, sometimes... You cannot do a proper job when you're being vindictive. That's just it. If you're trying to pursue some vindictive work, you can't do a proper job. I'm not trying to say I'm a saint here, but injury in football. I got, I've never caught my age before, but I got injured. The first major injury I had was what ended my career. Mm. <laughs> it's like, like I've never been out of a game because of injury, whether it's muscle pull or time string or anything. I've never had injury. I, I ran. I, I run like a cheetah very fast. I could dribble. I could be one move going to the right, and everything I want to do is on the left side, right? I'm that guy. But the one move is also that speed that killed me because if I wasn't, if I was slow like Kanwako, the goalkeeper would have caught the ball, move on, and then I will get the ball. 
But I mean, I took out four goals in that game. It was a friendly game. That's the sad part. I had a great season. It was a friendly game, and that happened. But you know, move on. They talk of if you have something to say, write an article that points pinpoint things that are missing. If I want to criticize Wilfred in the day, nothing will come from his age. I would say things about his game, the things that he needs to improve, and what he needs to change in his game. I will leave it there because you have to be constructive with that. Osima is a kid that I love. Like I really love Osima as a person. One of friends, like um, I mean, I don't know where he lives. I don't I don't call him every day. No. Like Ojo, I can say Ojo is my friend, like we're, like we're brothers, we're pals, right? Because I could call him anytime, I could reach out to him. I could send a message to Osimena and he will reply next December. I'm not angry. No, no, no. It's not, it's, not, it's not obligated to reply to me. It's not a big deal. It's like, once you get into that stage and know it, you will lose the sense of entitlement. Because that sense of entitlement is what kills people. And I get that from my DM all the time. Someone will send me a message and I'm on air. Like right now, I'm doing live stream with my, my, my phone. And I don't reply. And before you know it, 10 minutes or 15 minutes time, the person writes on that, uh, you're for me big now, Sha. <laughs> like, happened? you can't even reply somebody's message again. So yeah, I, I just come back, I read it, and I just block the person. Or probably oh. sometimes I don't reply and say, I've been doing a show for the last hour. Look at the time you send your message, and I'm streaming with that phone. How do I reply your message? But since you don't have the common sense to know that, bye-bye, I'll block them. So they don't even have a chance to reply. That's, that's, that, that's the way it goes for me. So sometimes our journalists don't realize that if we do not have mega stars in the spot, the journalists will be the poorest of them. You cannot be successful. If Pep Guardiola did not rise, Guillermo Balagu would never write that book, would never make the kind of money that is made. So we, we need to understand that. Imagine Michael Jordan did not, you know, happen in 1992. Uh, they didn't get all those big, big stars. Michael Jordan, for me, I think one of the biggest, the greatest guy to play basketball, but there are people who have 11 rings. So because they're always judging by six rings. People have 11 rings. How do you judge those people? But hey, that's a different conversation. But you see how the American media, let me show you one very thing, how American media give you larger than life image and uh, iconize you and make you a legend for life. Since Kobe Bryant died, if you're a social media user, especially Instagram or YouTube, you will notice that almost everybody is telling one astronomical impossible story about Kobe Bryant. What they are doing is they are subliminally marketing Kobe Bryant and making a legend out of him. In such a way that tomorrow they might do a movie of him that would be a blockbuster and what we need, very, very big, that will benefit his estate and put the image of basketball in everybody's head. Because right now they're making you think that, oh, man, man, you have to have a mamba mentality. That's how the media work. So you have to sell people, uh, you have to sell the people. Look, at when, when entertainment people wanted to grow in Nigeria, and they're still not there yet, so this is like their 10%, but I mean, it's still good. 10% of what they have achieved. They started making sacrifice. I worked for Mo Abudu at, um, as I was helping to lay cable because I go to House on the Rock and Moment with Mo was shot on a Sunday. As soon as I close, I don't want to go to my house. I'll go there. So I was working 5,000 hours to do it. But I was, I was loving it, right? We lay cable, do all those things, city more before it got bought. Now, the thing is, if you look at that Mo Abudu, that was the fan that produced Ebony Life TV. I produced that all, all these films that are come out. Yeah, and the inspiration from that film is what brought about all the films. Before we used to have some very, and it wasn't, I wouldn't use the word used, but it was the starting stage of the industry. Yes, yes. They said we used to have music like Ayaga, Yaga, Yaga, Yo, Hey. We used to dance to it. We used to enjoy it. Oh, said the rest of man, and then they come. But now look at the music we have. Our music are feeling all to arena. Um, music, the musicians show up and they are yeah, doing yeah. shows at Madison Square Garden where. Before we only hear it yeah. here of Madison Square. It's not it's not something that we even like if Nigerians travel abroad to say they want to go and enter Madison Square. Are you crazy? <laughs> are you mad to even to even envisage it, to even think of it? It's like a sin, it's a taboo. But now we shut down those arena. We shut down O2. We shut down any at Mercedes. We, we David could shut down Mercedes Arena. Because they, they, they started seeing things differently. They, they, the people reporting the industry started seeing things differently. And also, they use social media. Look at Ufuma Magdemo, Choma, Akotu, Akota. I'm not supposed to call that name wrongly. That's a wrong name. It's my guy. I know the guy, lawyer. That guy used to be in uh, Warren Sapero. Uh, Choma Akota, Omonio Boli, and Uche Jumbo. You know, see, 
they make Dubai look like heaven. Just because, like, if you know them and you see the emotions you get from them doing all of that. So if we, we say we're journalists, sports journalists, and all we can report is negativity, the funny thing is the food chain is like this. The footballers, the administrators are there, the footballers, the politicians and everybody, and then the people that are at the bottom are the journalists. So for as long as you're killing, you're injecting vile, poison into the root of the tree, and it begins to rot in from the top, there's no trickle down. The fruit will no longer, fruit like nourishable fruit will no longer fall down to us to eat. Uh, leaves that are supposed to be used for herbs and, you know, stuff will not come. Wood, branches of the tree that are supposed to be used for two-ply uh, tissue paper or notebooks or furniture will not come. The stem, the, 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 the trunk of the tree that can be used to do doors and the rest will no longer be available. Then there's no trickle down to us. It becomes a problem. But a lot of people don't see this shit and it's annoying. Like when I see them scramble, like, I was like well, these guys are not invested in the industry, Shah. So they can afford to do this as uh, freelancers. Some of them are working for somebody. At the end of the month, their, their salaries will come. So there is no big deal. But if, you, if you're an investor in the industry, you kind of like understand the paradigm shift and understand what branding is. This is not the era for that. You know, there's no organization that bashes more than when I worked in Brilla. Nobody, nobody's done bashing like us. We, we we bash to the point where we created a show called Hot Shots, where if we just want you to talk, we'll go get somebody to talk about you and put a hot shot and you call, hey, I want to set the story right, right? We'll get exclusive. But that time has passed. That time has passed. That's why Nigerian football, I would rather go on live with AY or Funny Bone or, you know, any of this comedy, I'm talking about Kewa. And that's why MasterCard in a World Cup year, looking for somebody to promote World Cup campaign, who go for Toke Makewa or Adolfo Mamadimod or somebody else that a football person, a football journalist, they might not say the words right, but they represent okay. a community that the brand is looking for. Well, we will we represent poison, snake, and then they find to the point where you use a blue necklace. <laughs> it's still snake. You still know that <laughs> this is dangerous. <laughs> and what's that song? Dangerous. And with, so that's where our journalists are. I just pray that. They wake up one. Ooh, we're talking about for my shoes. Yo, I didn't know. Hey, who was? What's, what's happening? What's happening in Dubai? In Dubai, uh, I feel like coming to now. But the play what I want to use. Uh, that say being used and go Australia and the play now come. Cars underscore three four seven say some of these journalists just want to be noticed. Uh, be noticed by the right the right way. What just want to be noticed. By Wilfred. Wilfred has played a lot of games for his club. I don't understand all this drama. That he's my sister. My sister even comments here. Sir. Okay, Odopia, say money, bros. I don't understand the bitterness in the media on our players. Okay? We see players in their countries play for 10 to 15 or for their country and will over 100 caps. But our media criticize us. So now we're winner. Uh, says you are knowledgeable it's incredible to watch thank you my darling you are darling that's this is like the best sister that god god provided for me okay i'm happy to call myself your brother i'm proud of you you're doing an incredible job in your space and uh you make me you made me like you made me literally sign up on tiktok if you look at me you don't know that i've been moving for tiktok but i just i love watching all the things that you do, like just watching your sister glow and shine and take the whole spotlight is a beauty. Like, you know, I'm proud to have people in high places like this that are connected to me and, you know, seeing her glow with her friends, uh, it it's it's, get, gets me emotional. Uh, Joanna says, uh, I am enjoying this live so impactful. So let's go back to the people commenting on YouTube, right? And this from us is... Uh, I will give my vote to Iwobi, the most consistent in the month of September. Me too, I'll give away my, my vote. Uh, I don't know where where uh, this, Benedict, uh, this Benedict is coming from, but he's entitled to his vote. I don't want to bully you. Well, and, every, and everybody that knows me knows that I, I give him sentimental. Be careful, go nowhere. Yeah, it's sentimental. As well, you're not done well this month. Mm, uh, sure, sure. Uh -huh. now, what my friend always says, I'm always giving cost, uh, constructive criticism. Your friends, your but, friends. But uh, your eye service is, friends. The truth is, life is always like that. That's what people just fail to realize. 
It's always going to be me. It's always going to be me. That's why. When I was me. when I was fifteen, I know Bukris is boy. That's why the when life throws you lemon, you make lemonade. So you can't yeah, that's, that's why you come here that they talk of parable. See. Uh, when the monkey, what's that thing you talk about? The monkey, please say, say, say that in the game. Okay, when the monkey is about to die, that's when the trees become sleepy. Uh, uh, well done, no. you see, 15 year old person will get uh, she's a brother of Okori Bobo brain. I'll be a uh, or guy, Peter Nochi or Uncle Peter Nochi's uh, brain. Well done, but well, let's go back to the comments on the YouTube channel. Mm. The other one you say, hello, but I'm you know, what is your take concerning the revealed? Messi's contract before 11 so there's nothing wrong with it say listen when it comes to contract you know, it's like selling perfume if somebody selling the same perfume the same product the same brand not hydrated selling a Versace perfume like one of my favorite a Versace perfume on traffic you would price and the bottle that small two liter bottle normally is sold for 125,000 right and like if you go to the shop, if you go to the IN shop, it's one hundred five thousand dollars and beyond. And this you see it in traffic. There is no way in this world you will price that thing for one hundred five thousand dollars. Not because even you that knows the value, like me that used to that bought it before, and I know the value, I will be tempted to say eh, how much last, and I say when ah, I have five thousand, I get to it. <laughs> yeah, Very true. right. But if I walk into a shop, I shop. Maybe let's say the shop is a shop, right? Let's not even go to, like, I go to Paris or I go to New York or Miami or anywhere or Dubai. I walk into a shop, a shop, right, and I see a price tag 100,000 naira. Do you think I would have the guts to go and say, uh, this is a perfume. Uh, I bet that 20,000 I get to, when I resell it for me like that. You, you can't. <laughs> so, Messi have earned the right to negotiate anything he wants to negotiate. That's why it is called contract. He have the right to demand whatever he wants to demand. Barcelona, even though they are over 100 years old, never seen or met a player like Messi before. Never achieved the kind of achievement that Messi brought to the club. So Messi have earned the right to do that. Because some of the sponsors, he knows. He plays in the club. He knows that some of the sponsors... I was working in Brilliant, for instance. I know that we have sponsors in the morning because of it. Because our evening is actually the market for The morning, we hardly get sponsors. Apart from the MTN, uh, fans, something... I was the one that was so I have the right to say, oh God, I don't care what you, your rules are, you have to give me bonuses for this, right? So it's a normal thing, even for everywhere in what people do it. Like the things that I'm doing is bringing in money, so I need a part of that. Money. Now, go back to the evening. Murphy was our market. Murphy is the guy who makes everybody get paid. Now, what people don't understand is some of those adverts actually are supposed to be played in the morning, but we can't. Like, you can't play alcohol adverts in the morning, you can't play some adverts in the morning, so you put it that's how we created the popular side, right? So now, Murphy can demand, okay, because this is happening on my show, I want XYZ. I can even, Murphy was any other managers, right? So it's just the same thing like Stephen A. Smith on ESPN, the highest ending sports presenter in the whole world, $13.5 million. That's what I want to be, uh, Parano, right? So Messi negotiated what he believed was his value. Now, if you are a poor man out there and you don't understand the economics of contract and negotiation and the sport, you could just sit where you are and say, oh, no, I had to receive that. No. If you ask me to post something on you, on my Instagram for you now, the highest I may charge you is maybe $100,000, $150,000. I, I have only 19700 Even after like 20,000 people will, will follow me and Instagram doesn't add it. doesn't matter. But that's what you will judge me by. But if you go to my sister, I'll my demo now and say, make this post. I think the minimum she will charge, like, I know you, okay, I just want to do it for you. It's five million. Right? Let's go somewhere. But we're both on Instagram. Even I go to Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, a five million era. Even I go to Cristiano Ronaldo, one post for Cristiano Ronaldo today is $3.1 million. So the brands, the brand power are different. The pool, the audience pool and the attractions are different. So you can't question this contract. The person who decides to leave that contract in public just want to have fun, just like what some of our Nigerian journalists are doing. So we need to understand these things before I see a lot of comments on social media about it. What are you saying? Do you even really understand what contract is, what brand power is, and all that? Uh, something for my sister here. Yeah. Uma Adema say, please, what is your take on Serena and uh, Federa retiring in the same year? So, you know how, you know my feeling about Serena Williams and Federa. I'm selfish about them. Like, I want to, I'm very, very emotional about the two of them. I want to see them play forever. But 
long ago, I'm coming from, I'm a sports person. So sometimes I say, you don't need to win everything to be an icon and a legend. Andre Pello is an example. Messi is an example. Messi does not need to win the World Cup to, to convince me that he's the greatest of all time. So in terms of what they brought to the sport, for Serena, Serena makes, the sport, tennis is a white people's sport. Just the same way rap, hip hop, and, um, and uh, basketball is black people's sport. So when you see Eminem singing rap, you feel like, ooh, the white man. No, it's not fascinating. The white man is doing it, but he's even doing it and the black people that have it. That's what Serena and Venus represent in the sports. They re represent what uh, Frederick Douglass was in the days of slavery. Uh, Rosa Park was. They are gatekeepers, pathways, people who, who clear the path, like Alibaba in Nigerian comedy industry. You know, they are people who open the door and make other people believe, make Naomi Osaka believe that my color of my skin will not stop me from doing this. A whole lot of other black kids now want to be there. That's what Serena is. For Federa, I just, you know, I like Aram B. Where's Federa plays? It feels like Lionel Richie is singing. Like, Somebody is singing, stuck on you, got a feeling that be my soul that I just can't lose. That's the kind of feeling you get with you. The smoothness, I'm, I'm not against Novak Djokovic. I love Novak Djokovic. I respect Nadal, but Federer is cute. So the two of them retire. I, I think that when Serena announced the retirement, Federer just looked at it like, you know what, there's nothing. It made, to me, I see them as husband and wife in the sport. Well, I guess, Federer also said it himself. It's already cool. Right? There is nothing to do. The body is no longer allowing him to do the things he want to do. There's nothing as difficult for a sportsman. Eh? Because this is Asper's work. You think it in your head, your hand re respond to it, or your leg respond to it. When you keep thinking it, imagining it, but your body, that's where there's a scripture for you to say that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. At that point, don't embarrass yourself again. Don't stress yourself. Just step away so that all these small, small children don't use you to score points and then begin to feel big and begin to feel important. And when you... When you when you roll out your emotions the way you should be as a human being, the media will not come. Oh, Serena Williams won the, 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 the finance for Naomi Osaka, your father. And it's the Federer just made the little boy look bad. You, you, you decrease. You understand? But they, they always do that. Too. They always do that because of what they've given, where they are coming from. And then they did not envisage that this is how it's going to end. It's hard to play in the final. When people play in football final and they cry, do people complain that, oh, why is this guy really crying? He just got invited for this. Person. You don't say that. Why would you do it for, for an individual? You play a team sport. I want you to hear that. Somebody played 19 minutes in South Africa. In football, 19 minutes, the leg goes all <laughs> So So sometimes I, I just love these two people. I, you know, you know my, my, my affection for them is very high. So for, my, for me, I love that they are retiring. Nothing affects their legacy. They'll be they're great, they are great forever. Like generations, people will come and talk about them that didn't even watch them, right? So they are great forever. The I mean they are Hall of Famers, icon, legend of the sport, forever. They are the reason why some people are playing foot, uh, tennis in Switzerland, in all black communities and all that. So that's where they stay in my heart forever. Okay, well, 10 o'clock now, but I'm gonna read all these messages. I have to go on a fast speed. The Vice said, I don't know if it's just my Twitter account, but uh, it will be has been trending almost all week from the weekend. He has been Everton's best player from the end of last season game in and game. And I agree with you. It's not just your Twitter, it's everywhere. It's on my Twitter uh, tweet line as well. And then Bala Oluwaf Chow for me says, uh, good morning, bro. For me, I like Alex Iwobi performance this past month, so I will vote for him. Please go to the website and vote for him. Please, it's important. Divine Tokyo, say, make him ride Okada. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Super Eagles fanatic, he said, Cameroon just got roasted. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Divine Tokyo, okay, he say, I'm sort of sad in that they would play but like Chelsea needs an urgent replacement for uh, CFC, so does the Eagles need a replacement for India. I think he was going to see uh, Ngolo Kante anyway. Uh, I'm very happy Oyedika is here. I hope he proves himself worthy. Uh, well, you can't judge a player by one game anyway. Let me tamper expectation on that. You let him, you know, get into the groove, uh, feel the chemistry of the team, and over time, it will come in. I hope that this players, okay, uh, are good, but I don't think that this culture of always wanting to retire players in a negative way, uh, it's time we do it with it. Okay, we'll let players enjoy, not let players regret playing for Nigeria. Okay, I don't think it's the best way. And we should also understand that even if people are playing, they have the right to say they don't want to do it. 
I've tried to interview Wilfred Ndidi many times. Went through his agent and all that when we're doing our film. But they were just not forthcoming. I cannot use that as beef. The man doesn't want to talk. I mean, I don't know. Let's let's just let's not even talk about this thing, okay? It's annoying. But I'm as well happy here and we try to come. Uh, yes, let him get a chance to play and let's see what he does. Who for my Adijala says uh, your value is determined by the place you market it. Absolutely, I agree with you on that one. And then it's my Marco Valentine says uh, Cameroon go get roasted today like uh, spring chicken. Wow, <laughs> you already you already so sure. Shall Adijala Fama says uh, just like Tiger Woods did for God, Federer was an orchestra to the oh, man. That's the right word. That's what I was looking for. It was the leader of the orchestra. He just brought everything. To... And then the way he plays, it makes it so easy. For me, Serena, okay, so let me say this. Serena have big breasts. In sports, that's enough disadvantage. And she's she's big. That's enough disadvantage. But to carry herself in that way, man, she's a mama tiger, mama bear. She's, she's, she's the queen, like, not the queen of England type, but she's the queen, the queen, the queen. Like, queen of all queens, okay? And I said that one. And then uh, Wale... Fatumbi said, your value is determined by the place you market it. The fight, okay, say, yes, Ungolo Kante, I know that's what you wanted to say. Uh, Timothy Daibo finally said, Cameroon don't lose already now. 2 0 to Uzbekistan. Ooh, give away no day map. I, well, let's not talk. We are going to the World Cup. We're not going to the World Cup. So we can't even, we can't even like shade them right now. We can't even roast them at all. Well, as we come to the end of the show, I want to go back to you, uh, my brother. Tell me. What is that story that we missed today? And what's that one story you have in mind that we should talk about that we didn't talk about? So, talk about it. Well, I think from yesterday, Oji Ju scored for France. In the same few battles was playing, you know, was playing. I'm really surprised because it just feel like he died and resurrected after <laughs> two years. I just, I was like, he went to the World Cup and this guy is single goal. I just that um, uh, yes, that was that was a big disadvantage of his career. I remember I used that against every Chelsea fan because I, I personally I have not liked Chelsea from day one. I always said you why you, why me. don't you like them? Uh, you know my dad was Chelsea and I so you don't like your dad? No, no, I don't like my dad. He just has this thing that comes with him. They're, if, they're too they're too arrogant, right? If if, if Chelsea fans are arrogant, I don't know what to call him about football fans then. But uh, Liverpool fans, I can understand. It took them many years to become this successful. So, but I'm sure if your father has never bought you toy and you're always playing with children who have a lot of toys, and then all of a sudden they took you to Legoland <laughs> and tell you pick any choice, any toy of your choice, your sport for choice. You can pick the Champions League, you can pick the league title, you can pick this one, and you're always out there. If you come, would you go and hide it in your room? <laughs> okay, would you come to the yard, the yard like we grew up in the compound or in the yard? You come to the yard and begin to play. That, that's exactly what they are doing, so don't blend it. Well, but I'm so scared, so maybe, maybe it's time for resurrection season. Maybe is this time tomorrow. Do you think that Mbappe is worth the hype that is put on him? <sighs> no, no, no reason. Mbappe isn't worth it. Well, it's time to go. Uh, next Monday, we'll continue on the show, but until then, we wish the Super Eagles the very best of luck. Uh, I want to appeal to the Nigerian media, those of you that are going to watch this or that are watching, that are following. Say, listen, the Nigerian sports media should learn from what the entertainment people have done, okay? Uh, there is no sports award in Nigeria that is 10% of what the head is, is, and a few other awards are there. In Nigeria, I'm not even trying to compare it to the rest of the world. There is a reason why. We've just ended the league season. We've not given any award. Uh, the media have not put themselves together to give an award, okay? This is not like voting for the NFL for the LMC. It's because we're also not good at what we're doing. Uh, when you look at England, about uh, the Premier League every year gets about 5.7 billion from a combined media force of Sky Sports, BBC, BT, and ITV. Uh, there is no media that is paying anything for Nigerian fans. Somebody says, Oh, let's put value. The people that will put value is the media. If we're not rich enough to put that, the media that will not pay workers for six months or eight months or seven months does not have the right to go out there and be criticizing people. Let's also be very, very mindful of this thing. It's, it's time to come together and build an ecosystem, an ecosystem that will work, that would also make it easy for us to end. If we keep destroying it like this, keep holding grudges in mind and wait for the day where one thing is not right, then we'll not bring it out. Oh, it's over age, it's this. We're just telling the younger generation that are coming that they cannot trust us with any secret. 
there are things that I remember when I interviewed Ojo Egalo, you know, uh, to move to Manchester United. And if people watch the, the the interview and good comment, but I got more reviews from people abroad, like people in the UK and Europe, in Spain, in Italy and France. Nigerians were saying uh, he's having marital issues. I interviewed him for one hour, 20 minutes. I could not even ask him about his wife, why his marriage is divorced. Like about journalists and who ask questions to journalists. They ask weird and awkward things. No, journalists is allowed to ask any question. But you can't force that to me. If you want to ask Ojo Egalo that question, you're a journalist. Too. <laughs> Go and interview him and ask him. I wanted to ask the bird to move to Manchester United. That was what concerns me at that time. So if that was my focus, let it be my focus. Don't come and tell me that uh, I don't do the interview well. I'll do the PR. Every interview, I have the objective what they want to interview. I'm not going to ask him about his wife because that's not my business. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he's dealing with that issue. Why resurrect it up? It's like, when I think somebody asked the badge one day, what were you doing when your child fell inside the pool? Uh, are you such a... And then that's the one you use as well. Yeah, I said, like, if I was there, I would do a funny kind of deal on that. <laughs> On that journey, but well, that's it. We come to the end of the show today. I've had fun. I don't know about you guys out there, but if you did, uh, thank you for joining me all the time. Uh, my beautiful sister from Adema, thank you for, for finding time in Dubai to join us, especially with the bad internet. Yes, we say it with that terrible internet. Uh, uh, Mr. Smile said, I don't go vote for Ted Hag, and it will be okay. Thank you very much. At least we voted for Wobi. Everybody, please go and vote for Alex Wobi. Now, you will not say I like it, Wobi again, though. No. When I criticize her, I'm definitely. <laughs> are very interesting people anyway. Well, thank you very much. God bless you. Do want to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Help us to get to the numbers where people can come to us and say, I want to give you money because we want to be on your show. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and an amazing weekend. May the good that we speak about come to us and may we have cause to be grateful for the good things that God has done for us, the good people that God has provided for us, rather than lament about the people who hate us, who don't hate us, who we assume that they hate us, and the bad that are going on around the world. God bless you and have for yourself a wonderful weekend. Better, do you have anything to say as we go? Um, just follow me, please, on Instagram at Ben Eki1. And... Say it where, Ben Eki. I don't know what you just said. Man. Okay, please follow me on Instagram at Benedict Eki1, E K I D Eki, then one, then on YouTube is also at Benedict Eki. So... Then it was my second role model. If you're going to be thinking any way, you might as well think big. It's from Donald Trump. That's a kick ass. <laughs> think big, a kick ass. Donald Trump, a kick ass. Bye okay. bye. Love you guys so much. I'm going to go. Where's my Juma Pelu for Mama Gibbons? Mademoiselle, Mesdames, and Messieurs, je vous dis bonsoir. Je m'appelle comment? Demande et ce soir, je suis.